Welcome back to our channel. I'm your host, and this is The Crime Files, where we bring you captivating crime stories of all time. Ever wondered about the shady world of organized crime in Europe? Hold tight as we reveal the chilling tales of the Dutch Penose and the French Milieu, the notorious crime organizations lurking in the shadows. It's taken the authorities 18 months of surveillance and phone tapping to discover that behind all the robberies is a well-oiled criminal organization. Also, what crime is like in both countries. Let's get into it. Did you know that the Netherlands holds the title of being the world's largest ecstasy exporter? It's true. But as we dig deeper, there's much more to these crime syndicates than just their notorious exports. Let's explore the streets of Amsterdam and other major Dutch cities where the Panose, a term derived from the old Amsterdam Barjond language, reigns supreme. It all started back in the 18th century with thieves, pimps, and shady sales assistants using the Barjond's cant language to communicate secretly. The word Panose originated from the Hebrew word Parnassa, meaning livelihood. Fast forward to the present day, and the Panose is synonymous with the Dutch underworld, thriving in a world of arms trafficking drug smuggling, and much more. These Dutch crime bosses are no strangers to international partnerships, teaming up with the British firms, Colombian cartels, Moroccan drug barons, and Pashtun drug lords. They have established a far-reaching network of illicit activities. On the other hand lies France, the land of romance, but also the land of organized crime. The milieu, also known as the French mob, or Le Beau Voyou, thrives in the urban jungles of Maricelle, Grenoble, Paris, and Lyon. The milieu's history stretches back to the early 20th century when prostitution, bookmaking, and hijacking were their primary activities. Over the years, they've mastered the art of money laundering, drug trafficking, arms smuggling, and counterfeiting. The port of Marseille serves as a hub for their illicit trade, a strategic gateway into domestic and European markets. As we compare the Panose and the Milieu, it's clear that both criminal organizations possess unique characteristics. While the Panose primarily comprises Dutch descent, the Milieu includes a diverse blend of continental French, Corsicans, French Romany, Italian French, Arab French, and Afro-French individuals. Furthermore, the Milieu showcases a more structured hierarchy with crime families and gangs, whereas the Pinoze seems to rely more on small local criminal groups. If you want to dive deeper into the chilling stories of criminal organizations, be sure to check out our channel for more content. Now, let's compare the general climate of crime in both countries. Human trafficking, a grave concern, casts a shadow over the Netherlands. Victims from countries like Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria find themselves lured into the country, trapped in a web of sex trafficking and forced labor. Among those most vulnerable are asylum seekers, preyed upon by child sex tourists. The pandemic has only worsened the situation, leaving people economically strained and more susceptible to exploitation. The Netherlands also serves as a transit point for human smuggling. The criminal networks orchestrating the step-by-step -step transportation of migrants to the UK. It's a complex web involving Dutch and other EU nationals, while foreign drivers are often employed to carry out the sinister plans. The closure of the French refugee camp in Calais has further fueled human smuggling activities through the Netherlands. But it doesn't stop there. The illegal arms trade is a tragic reality plaguing the Netherlands, acting as a gateway for arms traveling from Belgium, Germany, and Eastern Europe to the UK. And surprisingly, it is also a source of firearms destined for the UK. A small group of arms dealers, with connections stretching to countries like Poland and Croatia, are involved in this dangerous trade. Then there's the chilling presence of abundant synthetic drugs produced, exported, and consumed in the Netherlands. Amphetamines and MDMA, or ecstasy, are the notorious stars of this show, with travelers and motorcycle gangs controlling the production. Chinese transnational crime further fuels the supply chain with equipment and raw materials. The Dutch also face the overwhelming task of dealing with cocaine trafficking, with Amsterdam and Utrecht being significant hubs for the drug trade, dominated by Albanian mafia groups. Cannabis, a household name, remains popular among adults, despite its illegal supply chains. Morocco plays a significant role as an origin country for hashish, and Moroccan gangs are increasingly involved in the domestic cannabis production, adding to the situation's complexity. The heroin trade, though moderate in scale, sparks gang feuds and rivalries. The criminal actors are diverse and intricate. Loose criminal networks with ties of ethnicity, family, and friendship dominate the organized crime scene. At the same time, outlawed motorcycle gangs exhibit a more organized, mafia-style structure, ruling over various illicit markets. Surprisingly, 
Despite their criminal activities, these groups do not openly display their use of weapons. Foreign actors are not shy of joining the criminal ranks, and some evidence suggests the involvement of low-level state-embedded actors who facilitate illegal activities through information leaks and police infiltration. Even corruption at the municipal level, especially in the building industry, adds to the challenges the country faces. But don't lose hope just yet. The Netherlands has taken steps to tackle money laundering, cooperating with businesses to prevent criminals from exploiting legitimate enterprises. The Dutch Public Prosecution Service wields the authority to seize and confiscate objects and proceeds from criminal activities, striking a blow against illegal financial activities. In the face of this darkness, there are beams of light. Efforts to support human trafficking victims are government-funded through non-governmental organizations. Though not perfect, there's progress in expanding victim rights granting temporary stays to decide whether to cooperate with law enforcement. While research hubs study organized crime, the Netherlands lacks a national prevention strategy, instead relying on coordinated efforts among various judicial and law enforcement branches. The media also plays a crucial role, disseminating information to the public and maintaining high media freedom. As we dive deeper, let's talk about a significant aspect of crime, homicide. Back in 2000 and 2014, a remarkable decline in homicide rate was witnessed, with the number of cases per 100,000 population dropping to a mere 1.2 in 2014. The nation seemed to be on a path of peace. However, destiny had other plans, and a series of ominous events soon shattered the serenity. In the mid-1970s, a shadow of terror cast itself upon the beautiful French landscape. The nation faced a relentless onslaught of terrorist attacks, leaving a haunting mark on its history. Some of these incidents became notorious tales worldwide. The 1995 France bombings, the January 2015 La France attacks, the chilling November 2015 Paris attacks, the spine-chilling 2016 Nice Truck attack, the sorrowful 2016 Normandy Church attack, and many more. These heinous acts of violence sent ripples through society and led to fluctuations in the homicide rate after 2014, as fear and uncertainty gripped the nation. In September 2018, the peaceful town of Rodez witnessed a tragic event as a police chief fell victim to fatal stabbing by an attacker who was already known to the authorities. And in August 2019, the streets of William Bain Leon turned into a horror scene as a brutal stabbing claimed a young man's life and left eight others wounded, all at the hands of two armed assailants. But perhaps the most harrowing tale unfolded inside the hollowed walls of the Notre Dame Basilica Church in Nice on October 29, 2020. In a suspected terror attack, three innocent souls died and several others were injured. The echoes of that fateful day still resonate through the nation's hearts. However, corruption comes as the most dangerous plague for the country. Transparency International's report in 2011 revealed a concerning lack of efforts to combat crime within the nation. The same year, a public poll unveiled a disturbing truth. 72% of the French population perceived politicians as corrupt. This revelation casts a cloud of doubt over the pillars of power. Yet, amidst these daunting challenges, the spirit of France perseveres. The land of art, culture, and romance stands tall, facing an ever-changing crime landscape. Its valiant law enforcement and devoted authorities work tirelessly to ensure the safety and security of its citizens. And that's all from the crime stories of France and the Netherlands. What do you think drives these criminal organizations? Is it their ethnic diversity, geographical location, or something else entirely? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button to never miss a video. Goodbye.